When you want the best, but don't want to spend the most. Come okay, everybody, here we go. I think it's Can I get somebody here right away on the double? Yeah, uh, Cookie. Names, thanks. Okay, okay, I got it. No, no. No, that's okay, two will do. Okay. Uh, Contestants, how you doing? Welcome to our... You're a single player, is that right? Alright, could you give me your name, please? A thousand, gotcha. 30 seconds. Go touch. Okay, your buzzer is B as in uh, beer bong or, or just plain bong. I just need a wrench. Okay, well, honey, stop, move that yeah, What number do you see in the prompter? 33. Uh, look, I, look, oh, I need wow. a PA here right now on the double. 20 seconds. Hey, we got 20. All right, question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. You got that? Okay, I need everybody to quiet. I need to be quiet now. Okay, lose the desktop. Cue graphics. Sound effects on deck. Okay, go to black. Let's go. Barking Billies, where your pet fat is doggone. Welcome to the program. Okay, you ready to fly? Time for blast off. Okay. Get ready for some fun. It's question number one. Oh yeah. This one's gonna be what every good American should know. And we are talking one thousand bucks for this question. Have you been studying your state capitals? Well, that's not gonna help you at all. What is the national motto of the United States of America? In God we trust, all men are created equal, deus ex machina, or kumbaya. In God we trust. So much for separation of church and state. How about it? Hit me with a category. Look to do, it's question number two. The name of this category is Great Moments in Television Programming. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Which of these was not an actual television series? The ugliest girl in town, the girl with something extra, Torso the Clown, or my mother... Torso the Clown was not a series. Hey, boys and girls. I'm Torso the Clown. I wish I could see you, but I have no head. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. The category behind this question is short order cooks and men who like fire. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. If Greek mythology's Prometheus and Mel from Alice opened a diner, what would they logically specialize in? Soul food, liver and chili, matzo ball soup, or deep dish pizza? In case you're curious about the correct answer, liver and chili. Mel makes chili, and Prometheus gets his liver eaten by an eagle for eternity. Oops, How about it? Hit me with the category. You're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. Next up, ring around thine collar. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Lady Macbeth would probably be most interested in which of the following cleaning products? Toilet bowl cleaner, glass cleaner, air freshener. It removes those damaged spots. Forget all the waters of the Nile. It gets out chocolate, mustard, and murderous blood. And leaves my hands silky smooth. Okay, pick a category. Five. The category is Semites and 70s music. The amount on the table is three grand. Put on your yarmulkes and let's do the hustle. A little Israeli boy is running around yelling for his father in Hebrew. Which musical group is likely to answer? Sheik Ab Abba. Hebrew for dad. Swedish for my name is Bjorn. Come dance with me now. All right, come on, hit me. We need a kid. 
Uh-oh. Test Nut Slick Crime Store. It's time for a... Liquor Kiss No Scope. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. When you're gone. Opening value on this gibberish question, 5000 bucks. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. You ready to sort out some gibberish? Hope so. Tell me, what does this rhyme with? Laverne, shove the dead guy. It's the third in a series. Okay, let's see what you got, sir. I am your father, and now I will shove you. How about it? Zabba dooba dabbin, question seven. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Beat the meatles. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. The red light beacon atop the Capitol Records building in Los Angeles blinks what Morse code message? Paul is dead. Look out. Hollywood or Capitol Records? It blinks Hollywood. And from the Capitol Records building, which actually looks like a stack of records, you can see the Hollywood sign. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Wow! Wait, wait, elevate, hibernate, vegetate. The category. Crap we wanted as kids. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's going to be worth a grand. All right, gang, see if you can remember what I'm talking about here. What were those, uh, things released in 1983 that little kids really had? Cabbage Patch Doll. Yeah, I'm sure Mom and Dad are glad they shelled out a couple of Hondo to get Young Junior one of those timeless classics. Okay. Ooh, oh, what's your sign? It's number nine. Here's the category. High school lit and 1980s song titles. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. English geeks and people wearing parachute zipper pants, get ready. This baby's for you. Which of these 1980s song titles is a metaphor? Like a virgin wrapped around your wrapped around your finger. Ouch. It'd be pretty painful if it was literal. The name in this category is Superman and Color Perception. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. What if Lois Lane did a sizzling expose on tights wearing vigilantes and when Superman read it, he was pissed off? If Superman accused Lois Lane of yellow journalism, what exactly? Sensationalism. Yellow journalism was sensationalistic reporting to attract readers. Boy, glad those days are over. Okay, we're at the end of round one now. On to round two. <laughs> now pay attention, because all the questions in round two are worth more money. Let's do it. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. This one's going to be two holes are better than one. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. Let's just say for some odd reason the AMA decides that all penises should have another hole. What medical procedure would they devise to accomplish this? Penisectomy, penistropy, penisostomy. You got a hole in one. Ostomy means to make an opening. And if you're creative, you could come up with some other words you could tack that suffix onto. How about it? Hit me. Uh-oh, West Truck licks nine more. Once again, it's time for a... Tinker Lake Test Truck. Here's your gibberish category. Dancing and lawsuits. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. All right, ready? What childhood song phrase does this rhyme with? Hip, trip... Go for it. Type in your answer. Uh. Yeah, take it away, gang. Hip, hip, trip, give you a shoe. Hip, hip, trip, give you a shoe. Hip, hip, trip, give you a shoe for every nickel, my darling.
You know, I think I finally figured out this song. You know what they call a bathroom in Britain, right? Uh-huh. I've had to skip to the loo quite a few times. Okay, pick Next up, just give her a wedgie, Reggie. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which one of these is not one of the approved 50 ways to leave your lover? Don't need to be coy, Roy. Just go, just go ahead and leave, Steve. Now, that's one of the 50 ways to run out to the 7-Eleven to get some beer. How about it? The category behind this question is King Kong's next opponent. This question's gonna be worth two thousand one dollar bills. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. According to the song, which of these is better than old King Kong? Godzilla, the giant snake, Leroy Brown, or Mrs. King Kong? Leroy Brown. He was bad, bad Leroy Brown. I understand he was also meaner than a junkyard dog. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Evergreen, self-esteem, beauty queen, rapture spleen. Here's question 15. Here's the category. The sociological implications of those damn castaways. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Hang on tight, because here we go. Gilligan's Island took place during the French Revolution. Which character would be a member of the first estate? Gilligan, Thurston Howell, the... Mr. Howell, the first estate were the aristocrats. Oh, love it. Viva la revolution. How about it? Hit me with a category. Flush your head down the latrine. Easy away with sour cream. 16. All right, let's see what we're doing here. It makes the world go round. It's going to be worth $4,000. The Pacific Princess is the love boat. Herbie is the love bug. The B-52 sang love shack. Which of the following is the love apple? Las Vegas, heart, tomato, or scrotum? The tomato. The category. Try to blow a bubble with that. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Xanthan gum is a preservative made from bacterially fermented corn sugar. Food that contains xanthan gum has what kind of consistency? Syrupy and viscous, dense and rubbery, coarse and gritty, or fresh and clean? Fresh and clean? What have you been eating so? And here's the right answer. Syrupy and viscous. All right. The category is Scooby-Doo and Vitamins. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Okay, listen carefully. Let's say the popular cartoon star in Scooby-Doo introduces a new character, a cousin of Scooby's with a vitamin C deficiency. I tell me, what's the best name for this new character with the vitamin C deficiency? Scurvy-Doo. And if he cures himself the way British sailors did, he'll be Limey-Doo. The category behind this question is food for the great outdoors. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Hope you're ready because here's one coming at you. Which of these is not one of the ingredients of those campfire favorites s'mores? Raisins is correct. Yeah, those were actually bear droppings you had in there. Okay, pick a category. This one's going to be Short Things in Love. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Who would most likely have placed the following ad? Short orange male in search of short female. Me, approximately 4, a chocolate-loving foreigner working... It looks like you got the question right. And that, of course, was the lounge version of the popular song from the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory soundtrack. 
Hey, come on, hit me. We need a... Enter. Oh, you've done the attack before, huh? All right, let's get busy. Here's your clue. Whom are you fighting now? Stand by and let the fights begin now. Performance like this one, you deserve to have your own star on the Trivia Walk of Fame. And I promise you, if you ever get that star, I'll be the first one to step on it. Cause you don't know Jack. Okay, great show, everybody. Um, Cookie, what's the plan here with the contestants? Uh, seconds. Are you okay? I don't know. I, I've got everything I need here. I think. Yeah. Before the show today. Okay. So has anyone seen my lunch bag? Oh, uh, what was hey. it? My, my lunch, me, Ray. I, I, I think I ate it. Ray! What? Right, man. Not, I ended up throwing half the sandwich away. You threw half of my lunch away?! Hey there! Good morning, welcome to our show. Uh, could you tell me how many contestants we have? So, you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie, please. Sorry. Oh yeah, are you here for a- Cool. We got a pizza. 30 seconds. Uh, Your buzzer is the letter B, as in side of beef. I have one question. No, somebody told it, me no it time accurate? means no time. Is, is Do I, I have to draw a diagram? Like 20 seconds. We'll just eat it or Whoa, heads up. All right, listen. When a question pops up, you got to buzz in. Then you pick your answer from the screen, and you have to hit the right key that corresponds to it on your keyboard. You follow me? Ten seconds. Okay, is everybody set? Nine. Very good. Okay, lose Eight. the desktop, please. Seven. Okay, and go to black. Five. Four. Three. Stand by. Cross the line of good taste into great taste. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey you, how you doing? Welcome to the show. I hope you find the accommodations up to your standards, and if not, hey, it's too damn bad. Playing by yourself today. That's cool. I'll close my eyes. Okay, let's get this ball. Come on, we need a category. Next up, what are you looking at? And this one's gonna be worth $1,001 bills. Okay, take a shot at this. On your next vacation, you set off through the Marsh of Diseases, then hit the Bay of Dew, and finally head for the Sea of Fertility. Where are you traveling? In the state of Ohio, across the lunar surface, through the outback of Australia, or in a... No, but your score's going down. And, and over here, we have the right answer. They're all uh, points of interest on the moon. But if you're really into moons, next vacation, head to Fort Lauderdale during spring break. Take your pick. What do you say? And we call this one the fine art of baseball. Two G's for a right answer.
All right, feast your eyes on this picture and tell me which of the following titles best describes the fictional baseball movie represented in this illustration. A League of Their Own When you combine Edvard Munch's The Scream with a famous baseball movie, you get Field of Screams. And uh, I hear the screaming lead character will be played by one of Kevin Costner's financial backers for Waterworld. Ah! All right, go ahead. You and me. Baby me. Okay, coming up, this category is the science of daytime television. Two thousand bucks for right answer. Check this out. Which of the following would be the best title for a soap opera about a Foucault pendulum? A Foucault pendulum is used to prove that the Earth rotates around its axis. Before it was invented, everyone assumed that the Earth rotated around its mistress. How about it? We need a category. The light sounds of question four. The category. Uriah's Heap. 3,000 bucks for this one. The British have always had a knack for discussing life's unpleasantries in a proper and distinguished manner. Which of the following was a popular 18th century British euphemism for referring to human excrement? Sir Reverence, the... No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. Watch yourself, me lady. Do not step in that pile of, uh, Sir Reverence. Hmm, and I guess those must be the crown jewels. Nope, just some corn. Okay, pick a category. Category. The peat bogs echoed with her joy. Two thousand bucks riding on this one. Limber up those fingers. When you know the answer, buzz in and start typing. What is the direct object of the following sentence? Dirk the Hardy Viking gave a large vibrating goat to Griselda of the Moors. In case you're interested, here's the right answer. The verb is gave and the goat is being given, therefore goat is the direct object, but don't let it get your goat. Alright, go ahead and pick one. Can you dig it? Here's it. This one's gonna be saving the earth and blowing it up. Okay, three grand coming at ya. Okay, listen up. Like any good chemist, you like to keep your elements tidy and... And recycle. Based on their abbreviations in the periodic table, you keep your boron in an old vitamin B bottle and your carbon in a used high C can. Under the same system, what will you also have? Quinine in a Q-tips package, hydrogen in a preparation H container, krypton in a special... H is the abbreviation for hydrogen, so you keep it in a preparation H container. <laughs> Oddly enough, you keep your tungsten in a compound W bottle. Not your tongue, Stan. Your tungsten. Oh, thanks a lot. Now you tell me. Take your pick. The 7 o'clock news with question 7. Category, let's do it. Welcome back, Homer. And this one's gonna be worth $1,000. Get your fingers ready. Here's one coming at you. Plato is to Socrates as Vinnie Barbarino is to... Plato was a student of Socrates, and Vinnie was a student of Mr. Cotter on TV's Welcome Back, Cotter. And oddly enough, Vinnie played with Plato as a kid. Come on, we need a category. An outstanding selection, because under that category is one major league point-racking question. The Dis or Dad. Here's a category for this dis or dat. Fire-breathing politicians. Coming at you. I'm going to read off seven names. And for oh, you already know what you're doing. Okay, give me 30 seconds on the clock then. Here we go. Rodan, world leader or Godzilla enemy. Gandhi. 
Hirohito. Mothra. Gidra. Khrushchev. Thatcher. Back to the one you skipped. Gidra. Size here, seven out of seven. Yeah, that close a little sunshine into your total. All right, let's blow on to the next question. All right. Oh, the category is Gilliganistic Island. Get it right, get two thousand bucks. Hang on tight, cause here we go. What would be the most appropriate title for an episode of Gilligan's Island in which Gilligan gives up trying to find... A fatalistic Gilligan would believe that fate made him a castaway and there's nothing he can do to change it. So, why bother trying to get off the island or changing out of that red shirt and goofy hat? Okay, pick a category. This category is Wonder Bra-tastic. Pay attention, three grand on this one. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. In geology, cleavage is defined as the ability of a mineral to break apart easily. Because it has no cleavage, which of these minerals has the most need for a push-up bra? Quartz, feldspar, no, feldspar has good cleavage and a sexy sounding name. Too bad you didn't pick this. It has no cleavage. But it's still popular because it has a great personality and it's a good dancer. Okay, round one is history. Let's move on to round two. Now remember, round two means double the value of the questions, which means more cash won or more cash lost. Let How about it? We need a category. And this category is actresses with big brown eyes. And this one's worth two thousand dollars. Wow, these adaptations and updates are really getting out of hand. <clears throat> Imagine this. There's a new version of Madame Bovary called Madame Bovine that's designed to appeal to today's cow based on her counterparts. She's gonna have affairs with other bulls. <laughs> Say what you will, I think Demi Moore's gonna be all over this script. Come on, we need a... 12! Celebrity voice impersonation. And this question's category is... At the sound of the gunshot, this one's worth $4,001 bills. Hey, remember that movie High Noon with all the guns and shooting and stuff? What would happen if the climax of High Noon happened at the time that is the literal translation of the last... In Latin, nonus means nine, so Gary Cooper would have his show down at nine o'clock. All right, Parman, draw. Okay, now it's time for pancakes. Take your pick. What do you say? I love thirteen number thirteen. Uh -huh. The category is no nukes is good nukes. Four thousand bucks behind this one. Okay, when you know the answer to this one, buzz in and start typing. Ready? Help me out. I, I can't remember the name of that place. It was in the show it Chernobyl, often called the worst accident in the history of nuclear power. Kinda makes you wonder what the best accident was. Alright, go ahead and pick one. We wish you a number 14 and a happy Hanukkah. Alright, next up. What's that? Pop a right answer, you got 4K. Alright, here we go. Suppose the classic sitcom That's My Mama returns to television as That's My Mamilla. Which of the following show titles means basically the same? Hey, little buddy. Ow! Let me take a second of my time to show you what's right. That's my nipple. 
And uh, don't miss the spin-off series, What's Happening. The category. More bad TV you tried to forget. We got four grand on the table. Ready? I want you to complete this sequence. James T. West, Black Sheep Squadron, High Mountain Rangers, Battery Commercial. As we say in Russia, yet. Now the correct answer is... Robert Conrad. He played James West in the Wild Wild West, a World War II pilot in Baba Black Sheep, Jesse Hawks in High Mountain Rangers, and dared us to knock the battery off his shoulder in the battery commercials. Never scared me with that crap. Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, chess butt sits grime floor. It's time for... Flicker Kiss Don't Stop. And this gibberish questions category is... Susanna Hoffs gets mad. Opening value for this gibberish, ten grand. All right, I'm taking cash away every second and a half. So the faster you are, the more you score. Okay, now tell me with what location does this rhyme? The curb blue, a guy bangle. And remember, don't let the punctuation bangle you up. Take it away! Type in your answer in <laughs> It's the perfect place to get away from it all! How about it? We need a category. Okay, coming up this category is... Grab this and spit. Get this right, get $2,000. Uh-oh, Roseanne's been invited to sing the national anthem at another baseball game, and this time she decides to be even more controversial. If Roseanne does a strip tease while singing the Star Spangled Banner and sheds clothing only on keywords of the song to which could she not strip, America, Broad, Ramparts, or Streaming. I'm afraid you won't be staying for dessert. Here's what you should have picked. The word America never appears in the national anthem for the United States, so Roseanne would not be stripping on that word. God bless America. Category. Don't have a cow, man. We are talking four big ones. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. If your cow is suffering from panic, stumbling, loss of weight, decrease in milk production, teeth grinding, twitching, and a funny moo, what is most... Your cow's got bovine spongiform encephalopathy, also known as mad cow disease. <laughs> I'd be mad too if I were about to become a hamburger. Alright, go ahead and pick one. This one's gonna be... I guess you got past that anal stage, eh, Sig? And this one's worth $4,000. All right, fingers limbered, cause here comes the question. If Sigmund Freud had had a son named Stigmata Freud, what might you have expected him to do? Somebody with the stigmata inexplicably develops the same physical wounds that Jesus had on the cross in the Bible stories. <laughs> Poor Stigmata, his mother's a virgin and his dad keeps asking him what his dreams are. The Fresh Saver. 20. And we call this one, Someone's a Miss Here. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Okay, for this one, I'm not going to read the possible answers. You'll have to read them to yourself. Got it? Here we go. How would Mississippi's happily married mother write her name? And I think I'll just take this question out of the way so you don't cheat. Mississippi. Her marriage worked out a lot better than Missouri's. Take your pick. Oh.
You already know the way this works. All right, make sure your match fits this clue. Cat scan. Speaking of which, here's another expensive procedure. Good luck. Good show, everybody. Um, let's roll commercials and Cookie, what's going on here? Hey, sixty seconds. Cookie, you're shining a little bit, hon. Really? Can we get some powder on you? Can we get some powder on Cookie? Thank you. You know, there's some people who like to get their news and information from the newspaper, and there's people like you who like to play. You don't know Jack. Well, how many well-informed citizens of the world do we have this morning? Okay, fantastic. Fine line between being a game show and a babysitter. Now, type in your name. Well, that's what they call for. By the by, you here for a seven-question tournament length game or a full 21-question thingamajig? 30 seconds. Your buzzer's the letter B. That's B as in BAM. It's sort of a wacky dust bolt kind of thing. 20 seconds. You will be the crusty old... 20 seconds. Um, all right, listen. This couldn't be any simple. question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. Easy. You got it? 10 seconds. Good luck. Nine. Okay, eight, and get rid of the desktop. Seven, Let's go six, to black. Five, all right, folks. See you on four, the other side. Three. Heavenly Critters Pet Cemetery. For those times when your love doesn't fit in a shoebox. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey there, my name's Cookie. You have any questions at all, please feel free to keep them to yourself. Anyway, this is it? Just you? Well, I get paid no matter what. Okay, let's do it. I need a category. This category is known as, is it getting hot in here? Hot as $2,000 sound. So, you've heard that the story about the Great Chicago Fire being started by Mrs. O'Leary's cow is a myth, right? Sorry to break the news to you if you didn't know. Well, imagine the Great Chicago Fire had been started by Mr. O'Leary's cowper's gland. What was Mr. O'Leary most likely doing when the fire started? The the cowper's gland releases a small bit of fluid from the penis before ejaculation during either intercourse or masturbation. And they think they're going to need a bigger hose than that to put out the fire. 
category, please? The category is, is that you or are you just happy to see me? 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Think fast. It's Friday night and you're in a Congo Snake Singles Bar. Which statement are you most likely to overhear? Let's go to the restroom to fix my mascara. Let's go back to my place and shed skins. Look at the legs on that babe. Now, the Congo Snake isn't actually a snake. It's an eel-like amphibian. Yeah, no shedding. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. There tiny and they don't work, but nonetheless the Congo snake has two pairs of legs. And in these snake bars, it's not what you have, it's what you do with it. Okay, I need a category. One, two, two, brings me a mighty three. Okay, give it up for Saturday morning physics lessons. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. Just step up and take a swing at this one. Assuming Speed Racer wasn't just talking trash when he named his car, how fast could the Mach 5 go? Five times the speed of light, five times the speed of sound, five times the... Uh, no, that'd be if Speed drove the Millennium Falcon. Jeez, Chim Chim could have done better than that. Mach 1 is the speed of sound, Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound, and so on. The car would arrive at a given point five times faster than that cool ch -ch 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 sound it makes when it jumps. God, I love that. All right, hit me. You can't stop at three, no, you gotta have four, yeah! May I introduce strange doings on the eve of revolution? Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. All right, listen closely. During a meeting at the offices of a local political group, a doctor falls down and begins to babble and shiver because of alcohol withdrawal. What just happened? The SS had low IQs and high BP? The MC felt G-force in DC this AM? The VP went to LA to work KP for the MP? Or the MD had The doctor of medicine experienced delirium tremens at the headquarters of the Communist Party. <laughs> Yet another reason communism keeps failing, they can't hold their liquor. Okay, pick a category. Let's blow this down and head for number five. Well, what do we have here? Uh-oh, he's a conner. I'm giving out three grand for a right answer. So, Jimmy Connors made his money playing tennis, and Sinead O'Connor made her singing songs. Well, for a while she did. But tell me this, how did an ale conner make his money in the Middle Ages? Selling imaginary beer, holding up liquor shops, testing the king's ale? Oh, that's ugly. The correct answer is... <laughs> An ale conner would sit in a beer puddle for 30 minutes. If his pants stuck to the seat, the beer had too much sugar and was thrown away. Who says college doesn't prepare you for the real world? Category, please. This one's called, It All Started With My Mother. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Flex those fingers, cause here it comes. Which of these superheroes' reasons for fighting crime is the best example of the Freudian concept of sublimation? Sublimation occurs when aggressive impulses are altered and expressed in more acceptable ways. So basically, all that truth and justice crap is a defense mechanism against hatred and madness. Now that's the stuff of heroes. I need a category. Seven, lucky, lucky seven. Now serving, I'll reincarnate for ya. This one can net you a grand. Hey, remember Culture Club's music video for Karma Chameleon? It's set in the 1800s on the Mississippi where the boys are causing trouble on a steamboat. If Culture Club had shot its video for Karma Chameleon on a sacred Hindu river, which image might you now see? Karma is a central concept of Hinduism and the Ganges is a sacred Hindu river. As far as karma goes, do you think Culture Club will be considered a good act or a bad act in determining Boy George's station in his next life? Alright. 
You chose wisely, my friend. You just got your hands out of this or that. The category for this dis or dat question is, stop playing with that. Heads up. Now I'm going to read off. Okay, maestro, if you think you know the rules, I'll go ahead and put 30 seconds on the clock. Let's go in. Beat the bishop. Does it involve a yo-yo or genitalia? Choke the chicken. Rock the baby. Skin the cat. Spank the monkey. Walk the dog. Last one, whack the weasel. That's all she wrote. Six right. Not quite perfect, but you can't get any closer. Let's throw it into your score. Didn't have that before, did you? All right, let's move on. Okay. Aloha, question number nine. And this one is travel emergencies and childish giggling. You give me a right answer, I give you 3,000 bucks. Okay, imagine this. You're in Germany when you realize you're thirsty, your hands are wet, your pencil's broken, and you've really got to go. Which of these is not an actual German product you could buy? Happy end toilet paper, stiff dong paper towels, sip lemonade. You will not be able to find stiff dong paper towels. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? You can never find a stiff dog when you need one. Okay, I need a cat. Oh yes, it's time for your fantasies to be realized. You're joining a three-way. Okay, this is simple, but hear me out anyway. You're gonna see a three-way like this one. Oh, somebody's in a hurry. Here we go. The category for this little number is seizure-inducing music. So it seems we'll be joined by shake, rattle, and roll. Okay, hand on your buzzer. Here's your three-way. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Well, that's all we've got. Let's see how it turned out. Nicely done, a perfect score. Must be all that practicing alone, huh? This should firm up your overall score. Well, it's time to get back to the game. But, uh, you will call me, right? One down, round two to go. Let's get on it. Now remember, everything in round two is worth double, so head... All right, hit me. Well, looks like this category is, come on, honey, I know it'll perk up soon. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. You know that couple from those Taster's Choice commercials? Let's say they're really hitting it off and want to, you know, go all night, but they're out of instant coffee. What could they ingest that would give them the biggest caffeine boost? A can of cola, a cold remedy, a chocolate bar, or a cup of Earl Grey tea? A cup of black tea only has around 40 milligrams of caffeine, not enough to ensure they'll be up all night, unless they pour it on each other. Here's what you should have picked. According to the FDA, a can of cola can have up to 72 milligrams of caffeine, making it a potent caffeine source. Times like these are made for carbonated sugar water. I need a category. I'm getting a rating of 12. Over. For your enjoyment, frat boys from outer space, you get 4,000 clams for this one. Okay, let's say the planets of the solar system have a beer bash and start disturbing the peace. 
Because it has no natural satellites, which of these planets would not be able to moon a passing comet? Saturn, Mercury... No, must not make Uranus joke. Let's take a look at the right answer. Mercury has no moons. They only let him into the party because he agreed to the panty raid on Venus. Category, please. Here we have, how does one get to be a Sergeant Major Kangaroo? And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Put your tray in the upright position, it's time for takeoff. Suppose Captain Kangaroo were replaced by another marsupial. Who would not be considered? Private Possum, Sergeant Sloth, Colonel Koala, or Warrant Off? Uh, could we have the check, please? For the curious, here's the right answer. Sloths are not marsupials because unlike the others, they don't give birth to premature young and carry them to term in a pouch. Plus, they don't have silly mustaches and goofy red jackets either. Okay, pick... And I believe this one's called, didn't they used to be green? For a thousand big ones for a right answer here. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. According to Klingon lore, what ritual might the Klingons have performed when Star Trek The Next Generation went off the air? The T. When one of theirs falls, Klingons howl to alert the afterlife that a warrior is coming. And to warn us that an endless series of movies is coming. Okay, I need a category. Not 14, not 16, you're right in between. The selection is Sucker, I don't even know her. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Okay, pay close attention to the following audio file. Here's a few words from famous showman P.T. Barnum at the circus. There's a sucker born every... <laughs> What's the correct word that completes P.T. Barnum's quote? Second, moment, minute, or f Barnum said there's a sucker born every minute. <laughs> and of course, that was before the days of fertility drugs. Category. Uh-oh, blah, 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 blah. It's time for a triple SMS fun. Let's see if you can make sense of this gibberish category. How was your hair day? The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10K. Now listen up. Every second and a half, some of the cash is going to disappear. So if you want to win big, you got to be quick. Okay, pay attention. With what song title does this rhyme? Hair day blue. This could be it. Just think about it. Somewhere in the nation, there's at least one radio station playing that song. Really, it's touching. On the big bayou in Louisiana, crest on 17. Pucker up for this old cave. How does four thousand dollars grab you? Okay, get your eyes focused and try to solve this analogy. Stalagmite is to stalactite as oven is to refrigerator, floor light is to chandelier, ceiling fan is to air conditioner, or armoire is to dinette set. I'm shaking my head right now. Should have picked this. Stalagmites are deposits on the floor of a cave. Stalactites hang from the cave ceiling. These were major problems for Martha Stewart in a previous life when her name was Thog. I need a category. Coming at you, Imelda Marcos' favorite song. Get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. According to the lyrics of Blue Suede Shoes, which of the following... Carl Perkins' Blue Suede Shoes doesn't say anything about letting you kill his dog. Of course, that's until the first time his dog piddles on him. Okay, pick a category.
say hello to... Der wunderbar Wizard von Ots. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. So, did you know that L. Frank Baum was the author of the Oz books? Well, now you do. Based upon what Baum means in German, what part of the Wizard of Oz might have been inspired by his life? Baum is German for tree. <laughs> Which explains why Toto kept wanting to pee on him during the filming. Okay, I need a category. This one likes to go by Twinkies older than Christ. $2,000 says you don't know this one. You've finally gotten around to cleaning all the old food out of your fridge. If these foods were made on the birth date of the historical figure on their labels, which one would have the oldest born on date? Snack cakes from Dolly Madison, frozen pizza. American Revolutionary leader Sam Adams was born in 1722 and poured his last beer in 1803. <laughs> and if you've opened his coffin lately, you'd agree that he is definitely skunked. All right, hit me. You're about... All right, fine. You want to get to the attack? Consider it done. You may need this clue. I can't remember your name. But can you beat the jack attack? We're about to find out. Jack attack like a finely tuned instrument. Take a look at your final score. That's the game. Wow, you were the best guest we had this whole game. Really? Now do me a favor. Take a quick look to your left, now your right, and repeat after me. You don't know Jack! Beautiful. Very nice work, people. Hey, Raul, what's up? Are we doing another one of these? Hey, I don't want... Good morning. Welcome to You Don't Know Jack, the ride. You know, it's not just for breakfast anymore. How many of you are there? All by yourself? Well, no worries. There'll be enough trivia and comedy for three humans. Are you a first-time rider? Oh, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you right away. My apologies. May I have your name? How gracious of you. Thanks. Remember to be all you can be. These little elevator jumps always end too soon. Oh well, see you at the bottom. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by the American Council on... Rural stereotypes. We ain't no different from y'all folks. You hear? And now, here he is, the most dangerous man in trivia, 
Schmitty. Well, howdy, y'all, and welcome to Branson. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. It hurts my throat. Saddle up and let's ride. I'm calling this one the king of Branson, Missouri. Check this out. If singer Andy Williams built his Moon River Theater to resemble the Moon River from the song of the same name, what might be true about his theater? It would be bad and rising, it would be dark on one side, it would be blue, or it would be wider than a mile. His theater would be wider than a mile. And with my luck, I'd have seats in the back row. Work that buzzer. Here's a little something I call... Look at the knobs on Branson. Hey, did you know that there's a show in Branson called the Bald Knobbers? Can somebody tell me what kind of freaks go to this place? Well, check this out. If the Bald Knobbers Jamboree actually featured the historical Bald Knobbers, what would fun-loving audiences be able to watch? Bank robbers, vigilante executioners, lewd sex shows, or cannibals? The original Bald Knobbers were a group of vigilantes who forcefully restored order in the post-Civil War Branson area. And they did it all with their big swinging There, is that what you were waiting for? You've been thinking about it since the beginning of the question, haven't you? Hit that button. The category is... Them fancy vittles. Well, I'm sure that if you've ever been to Branson, you've seen the down-home antics of the Presley family in their show called Presley's Jubilee. Well, suppose the Galloping Gourmet attends Presley's Jubilee. Considering the culinary meaning of Jubilee, what might he expect to see on stage? A group of silly chaps cut into long strips. A few odd young fellows on the half shell. Several strange blokes in flaming brandy. Or some ridiculous gits covered in hot sauce, yes? Just like Flambe, Jubilee is something that's drenched in a liquor like brandy and then lit. Of course, in Branson, they just use Budweiser. Buzz in. It's not a speed bump, it's roadkill. Don't forget, when you see the answer that unites the pair of items on the screen, go ahead and buzz in. And pay attention to the right answers for the bonus round at the end. Now, we put the hammer down. Rob Petrie's boss Brady and Thick Canadian. Where do these items intersect? Score. The Duke and Garth Party Time Bud. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all Walkins kids? Five traps? Two kids on the block? Ball robbers? The Jackson Five? The Osmonds? You got it! You're a little bit country and you rock and roll. Here's your current score. You feel good about that? Let's keep going. This one's called... Somebody stuck him with a hook. 
5133 riding on this one. Hold on tight. Say entertainer Mickey Gilly takes ill Lee and has to be replaced by a guild animal in his stage show. Which of these will audiences not see? A tadpole singing window up above, a seahorse singing stand by me, a dolphin singing a room full of roses, or a shark singing you don't know me. Dolphins are mammals. They don't have gills or a sense of... I want you to... Coming at you. It's always darkest after the Tony Orlando and Dawn. Time for the trivia. If singer Tony Orlando were the lead character in Virginia Woolf's novel Orlando, which of these songs might he add to his lineup? I'm in the mood for lunch. I'll be a woman soon. My old black magic or unchained Melanie. In Virginia Woolf's Orlando, the lead character is a male for two centuries and then becomes a woman for two more. And Tony would close his set by singing Tie a Yellow Garter Around the Old Oak Tree. If you know what I mean. Up next. Please, sir, may I have some more OJ? Yep, they got everything in Branson, M.O. Hell, even the orange juice queen Anita Bryant can still pull in an audience. Anita Bryant led a campaign in the late 1970s called Save Our Children. From whom or what did Ms. Bryant feel our children needed protection? Hunger, abuse, illiteracy, or homosexuals? Back in 77, a county in Florida passed some laws protecting gay rights, so Ms. Anita Bryant, mouthpiece of all that is good, spearheaded a protest campaign called Save Our Children. So our children might be injured, illiterate, and hungry, but hell, at least they'll never be open-minded. It's a buzzer. Branson is a happening place located in the Ozarks. O-Z-A-R-K, O-Z-A-R-K. This message brought to you by the Branson City Council. Okay, yeah, Branson is your place. Yeah. Welcome to the Ozarks. Have you met my sister? Remember to win the cash, buzz in when the first letter of the answer lights up. If you get all five letters, you win the bonus. Okay, come on. World famous guitar player, Chet. Good pick. They sing the praises of Elvira. Giddy up, Bobby Diddy. This Rogers is the gambler. Kenny Rogers. Country singing young and Leanne. What rhymes you correct? One more letter and the bonus is yours. State just south of Missouri. Arkansas. Snack cakes or snappy punchlines. Zing. Way to go. Ozark! That belongs to you! Check out your score there, make sure everything's in order, and we're moving on. Alright, buzz in and get your money's worth! The category's gonna be... Pulling a train. Ready or not, here it comes. If Boxcar Willie rolled boxcars while playing craps, what would he have? Two twos, two fours, two fives, or two sixes? When you're playing craps, boxcars are double sixes on your first throw. So tell me this, if you're playing craps, do you have to wear special underwear? You know, on your caboose? Buzz in and lock down to the highest. Fine choice. Brace yourself, my friend. It's time for Dis or Dat. This Dis or Dat questions category is a hit. I'll give them a hit. Now, I'm going to read off the names of seven wacky songs. And for each one, I'd like you to tell me if it's a Jim Stafford song or a Ray Stevens song. Cash in for each one you get right, and you lose some cash for each one you get wrong or don't get to. 
You got to get all seven of them in 30 seconds. And we're off. My girl, Bill, Jim. They have the A-Rab. Spiders. The Street. Get Tarzan. I ate Sharon Sharon. I got stoned and I missed it. Yeah, you rock. Seven out of seven. Woo! Here's your current score. You feel good about that? Let's keep going. I'm calling this one. I O Silver Dollar City. You know, you don't have to waste your cash on music and shows in Branson. No, no, there's plenty of crap to spend your money on at the nearby Silver Dollar City Amusement Park. If Silver Dollar City adopted as their official mascot one of the people who have been featured on the U.S. Silver Dollar, who would be plastered all over billboards and t-shirts? Paul Revere, Jefferson Davis, Dwight D. Eisenhower, or Neil Armstrong? Before Susan B. Anthony, there was President Dwight D. Eisenhower's big, bald knobber. Welcome to Silver Dollar City, everyone, where we love Branson, and we love Ike, and Ike loves Branson. Hit that buzzer and try Nice job. I got underwear cost me more than that. Your category is... When Mini Pearl isn't as good as you remember. You know what I like about country music? The performers know how to put on a really big show. And the fans know how to put on really big hats. If your 10-gallon hat could actually hold 10 gallons of liquid, which of these is the maximum amount you could throw on stage during a lousy performance? 10 quarts of tomato juice, 20 quarts of creamed corn, 40 quarts of rancid milk, or 100 quarts of rat urine? One gallon is four quarts, so 10 gallons would be 40 quarts. Howdy! Buzz in and tell me... I could use a good euphemism for clue right about now. Here's your hint. Now nah, that sucked. Here's your clue. The Branson Guide to Curse Words. If it'll help you, imagine your El Camino just got stuck in the crick or something. You know, who the hell else was going to get them, right? This Friday, the Home Entertainment Channel brings you Catholic Confessions. Hear and see the deepest secrets of these faithful churchgoers through the use of hidden cameras in a confessional booth. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Could you please speak up and lean back slightly? Watch as these hell-bound sinners make a break for heaven. Well, I... I covet my neighbor's wife. And does she covet you back? These priests have heard it all, and now so will you. These are some of the most original sins ever. Could you describe these impure thoughts? Explicitly? Please, it's important. Remember, if they weren't guilty of something, they wouldn't be here. Friday on AGC.
glad you could make it. So, what kind of game do you want? Network or... Home sweet home. How many people? Well then, tell me, what's your handle? Alright, that'll do it. Does my star people want... Okay, hey, smarty pants knows it all. Hope you know how to pick the best pod. where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, get this. It's the beginning of the end. The end episode, that is. You know, I hate to see things come to an end, but every ending is a new beginning. Speaking of beginnings, let's get started. Welcome, hi, hello there. This is You Don't Know Jack. I'm Schmitty, and you're playing by yourself. Well, don't be embarrassed. It's probably just a phase. And we're off! Hit the buzzer for the value on this one! Let's see the amount on this one. $3,000! Shake hands with rootin', tootin', and shootin'! Okay, let's rock! Suppose the village people just finished a concert in Utah, where about 30 people showed up. What state should the cowboy ride toward if he wants to ride off into the sunset? Colorado, Idaho, Wyoming, or Nevada? The lights are on, but nobody's home. Why didn't you pick this one? Nevada is directly west of Utah. Of course, if he really wants to ride into the sunset, he can ride east to Cape Canaveral, where they can equip his horse with rocket boosters and actually launch him into the sun. How about a value? The value for this question is 1250. This category is known as Holy Rollers with Ball Bearings. It's time for another episode of Robot Theater. Today, our robot thespians will be performing a play they adopted from the Bible. Take it away, kids. Let us ride and bring about the end of the world. Yes, let us. Hey, why do I have to carry scales? Stop complaining, famine. But war gets to carry a mighty sword. That is enough. Come on, horsemen. The apocalypse waits for no one. I wish I had a gun or something. Quiet. Chilling. So tell me. From what book in the Bible is this highly mediocre play adapted? Book of Job, Book of Exodus, Book of Revelation. The Book of Revelation. Now, I'm not positive about this, but I think one of the seven signs of the apocalypse has something to do with robots attempting to act. Go ahead and grab an amount. The total value for this one is $4,000. The category and the zygote you wrote in on. See what you can do with this one. If Noah Webster always had to have the last word, what did he say? Zythem, Zizimus, Zizajetan, or Zithiasi. That word with all the Z's there comes last in Webster's International Dictionary. It says here that it's some type of South American leaf hopper, but some suspect it came about one night when Webster was trying to win a game of drunken Scrabble. Go ahead and pick an amount. Let's see what the total amount on this one is. Twelve fifty. We're calling this one. She's a real kick in the fanny. Ready? Here's the question. Because she was a prostitute, which Fanny's Fanny got her in the most trouble? Fanny Mae's Fanny, Fanny Bryce's Fanny, Fanny Hill's Fanny, or Fanny Crosby's Fanny? Fanny Hill, the heroine of the English novel Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure, got her Fanny in quite a bit of hot water over the years. Not to mention cold water, 
baby oil, melted chocolate, warm butter. Take a value. The total amount for this one is going to be 1500 Well, if it isn't my old friend, my kingdom for a script doctor. I hear that Shakespeare wrote that the world is a stage. Well then, if Shakespeare's life had ended the same way Antigonus's final scene ends in The Winter's Tale, how would Shakespeare have left this world? Riding on a dolphin, pursued by a bear, fleeing with three monkeys, or running after chickens? Running off chasing chickens. Close. I believe that's the stage direction in Act 3, Scene 5 of Shakespeare's lost play, A Midnight Summer's Bucket of Chicken. Uh, does this ring a bell? It says it right here on page XXVI. Antigonus is supposed to exit the stage pursued by a bear. Now, if Shakespeare's life were produced by a local theater company, he'd probably just be chased by a, you know, second-rate actor in a rented bear costume. Time to pick a value. Well, damn, this makes for a nice little prize. 10,000 bucks. What in the... I can't read this. It's time for... Just unscramble the anagram, buzz in, and type it in. You move fast, you get more cash. We're going to start this question out at 10,000 bucks. Okay, take a look at this phrase I got here and see if you can... I try change gem. It's the title of a movie from 1992. Ah, yes. A great year for movie titles. There's a surprise twist that sets up the end of the movie. Go for it. Type in your answer and hit return. My dad used to play a game with me called The Crying Game 2. Not a lot of rules to it, he'd just try his best to make me cry. And then he would start to laugh. <laughs> I bet he's laughing right now somewhere. <laughs> I hate you, Daddy. I love you. I hate you. <laughs> Pick a value. The total amount for this question is... 4,250 bucks. Allow me to introduce... Jehovah? It's go time. If the Jehovah's Witnesses proclaim that the end of the World Wide Web is near, which of these will they most likely say? Only Java-based websites will enter heaven. Only 144,000 websites will enter heaven. Only young websites will enter heaven. Or all websites will enter heaven. Blessed are those with slow modems. Our friends over at the Witnesses claim that only 144,000 people, God's little flock, will be saved at the apocalypse. They base this belief on something they found scribbled on the back of an ancient cocktail napkin. Buzz in for the amount. Here's your total value for this one. 4,250 bucks. Here we have... There's gold in them thar Lauren Hills. Think fast, here it comes. Let's say you get to the end of the rainbow and you find a pot of gold records. What is necessarily true of these records? They're all on American labels. They've all been number one on the charts. They've all netted over $10 million in sales or they've all sold 500,000... And falling to the bottom of the chart this week, you! The correct answer is... You want a gold record? No big deal. All you gotta do is sell half a million copies and then send the Recording Industry Association of America about, oh, 300 bucks. Oh, Sinead O'Connor. There you be, lassie. I knew you'd be hiding somewhere these past few years. Take a value. Let's see how much you can win this time. 2,250 smackers. This category is, tonight I'm going to party like I'm nine. All right, here's what's what. I want you to take a look at this personal ad and see if you can tell me who might have placed it. When you know your answer, buzz in and type. Small white toddler in top hat and birthday suit in search of potty trained female to share the bubbly and ring in the new. The old man's gone and there's a new kid on the block. It's yours if you want it. 
Baby New Year is the swinging toddler who wears nothing but a smile and takes over for father time at midnight on New Year's Eve. Of course, the next day he's all hung over and spends the whole day puking. Just like a regular baby. Get a value! The value for this question is going to be 47.50. This one's called Save the Last Waggle for Me. All right, imagine this. For the last dance at prom, you grab your date and begin doing the waggle dance. If it performs the same function as a honeybee's waggle dance, what will your date learn? Where the punch and cookies are, who the queen is, whether you'll have sex later, or how to get back home. If this question is any indication of your coolness level, then the answer has been and always will be no. For the curious, here's the right answer. The waggle dance is the dance that little scout bees perform to let the colony know the location of nearby food sources. Or maybe he just drank too much on the way to the prom, I don't know. Grab a value. And here's what you're working with. 2,500. Time to start swatting bugs. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome to Bug Funny. Out. Remember, buzz in when you see a bug that does not belong to the set. And you'll be working up to a final round value of 2,500. Okay, the end is drawing nigh. Even though I have no idea what nigh means, let's get to it. Desserts, buzz in when you see one that's not. Here are the two. Make the last cut. Actors whose characters live through Scream 1. Rose McGowan. Aunt Campbell. Baby Upset. Porky Fox. Henry Winkler. Mad Campbell. Woo! Woohoo! Football terms. Woohoo! Tight ends, Jennifer Lopez movies. Selena. Blood and wine. And talk much. Get here. Shakespeare characters that die by the end of the. <laughs> Extinct animals. Giant panda. Well, that was good. Not great, but, you know, not horrible either. Buzz in for the value. Here's what we got. $4,000. Coming at you, Mr. Clean for president. Get the wax out of your ears. It's question time. If Franklin Delano Roosevelt used end dust to clean up the dust bowl, what would he be wiping down with an old cloth? The Ozarks, the Great Plains, the Mojave Desert, or the Continental Divide? The Mojave Desert? Say, are those vultures circling overhead? Yeah, apparently. Does this ring a bell? The Great Plains! Yeah, that FDR always was good at cleaning things. In fact, he blamed the Great Depression on insufficient mopping. Choose an amount. The total for this question is $4,000. May I introduce, it's not over till the fat lady loses some weight. So, it's not over till the fat lady sings, huh? All right, then. 
If a music company wants to measure if a fat lady is really fat enough to qualify for one of these singing gigs, which of these scenarios might occur? BMI assessing her BMI. Deca assess. Deca, deca, high, deca, high, no. The correct answer is. The BMI, or Body Mass Index, is a tool used to determine whether folks are in their healthy weight range. And since her name is Fat Lady, I'm going to guess probably not. Pick any amount. Let's make this one worth $1,000. Here's a little something I call the Porky Gates of Heaven. Ready? Good. We're starting. Where might a pig spend its afterlife? On a platter of moussaka, in a pan of brajol, on a plate of kucha fritos, or in a bowl of tripe? No, silly. You're thinking of a heavenly cow. I love cow. So you don't lose any sleep over it. A plate of kucha fritos is just one of the many tasty places a pig can spend its afterlife. In pig heaven, you don't have to do good deeds to earn your wings. All you have to do is taste delicious. Go ahead and choose a value. All right then, grab hold of something. You're almost through, but first, you should already know how this works. Let's not waste any more time. Need a clue? Going out in style. Let's see how you make out. A million! Let's see how you jacked up your score! There it is! Wow, that game was so well played, it reminded me of... Well, I tend to forget a lot of things these days. Oh, but I won't forget to tell you this. You don't know Jack! Hey, listen to this. It's a recording from the planet Mars. Hey, keep it down! I'm watching a game over here! the monkey during the season, squirt! How many times did I hear that? Hi, I'm Hawks quarterback, Rusty Grew, and I'd like to tell you doing it with yourself is okay. It's easy, fun, and you don't need any special shoes. It's the best thing practices and games, and you'll be a winner, too. <gasps> Psst, hey, listen to this. It's a recording from the planet Venus. Oh, my God. I'm having hot flashes again. Do these pants make my butt look big? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go shopping. Yeah! Here at Wackefson and Snurm, we're working for you. We understand that service is what creates customer loyalty, and we're willing to stand on our heads to keep you coming back. In fact, we'll stand on our heads, then do cartwheels. We'll juggle. We'll ride unicycles. We'll ride unicycles while twirling plates on the ends of sticks. Anything to show you that you're number one. We'll wear funny hats. We'll cover ourselves in your choice of delicious ice cream toppings and light our hair on fire. We'll hire you a band. We'll repaint your house. We'll introduce you to Mr. Robert De Niro. We'll have attractive young people of your sexual preference hand feed you grapes and fan you. Wackerson and Snurm, totally committed to serving you.
If you'd like to make a call, then show me you want that call. Come on, show me how bad you want to make that call, baby. I don't think you really want it. I don't think you want to make that call. Come on now, show it to me. Show me you've got 100%. Show me you're going to put it on the line. Make that call now. Make it. This week on The Bachelor Chefs, the theme is macaroni and cheese. Ah, I see the bachelor chef is preparing his macaroni and cheese using a zesty white cheddar mix. Yes, and what's this? He only uses half the recommended amount of milk? Fascinating. The challenger is seasoning his macaroni and cheese with pepper and a dash of leftover Tabasco sauce. The smell is extraordinary. Who will win this battle? The bachelor chef's macaroni and cheese did not boil too long. It is not mushy. The dish is creamy, but not too rich, or a buttery goop. <laughs> the challenger's macaroni and cheese, it is a bit runny, perhaps too much milk. Yes, he should have allowed it to sit for a few minutes. Next time on The Bachelor Chefs. If you'd like to make a call, don't use a cactus. It will sting. Hey, what are you doing? I'm lonely, are you? Call me, 1-800-HOT-BOX, let's go out. I was up for a night of hot woman on robot action. Well, I got what I wanted. Plus, at the end of the night, my robotic escort really put out. Give me a call, 1-800-HOT-BOX, I'm waiting by the phone. Plus, at the end of the night, I really put out. John, good buddy? Over. I'm not your buddy. Over. What? Over. Don't call me buddy. Over. Well, why not? Over. I don't really know you. Over. Well, I'm a nice guy. Over. That doesn't make us buddies. Over. Well, can I call you an acquaintance? Over. Yeah, that would be okay. Over. Got your ears on good acquaintance? Over. Whoa, whoa. I wouldn't say we were good acquaintances. Over. What? Over. <laughs> If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and fry a hen. Welcome to VH1's Behind the Song. This week, Leonard Skinner. Sure, the free bird we all know now is like 15 minutes long, but when we started out, that song was like, what, a minute and a half? Mm -hmm. But the fans, man, they just wanted more and more. So I told my boss, if you ask me to work on Saturday one more time... One more time? All right, one, two, three, four... I was playing this video game and I reached the bonus level, so I won more time! Alright, one more time! What's your name? One more time. What? One more time! Alright, you got it! It was the weirdest fork. It had like one more time than regular forks. Woohoo! Tune in next week for another episode of VH1's Behind the Song. If you'd like to make a call, why don't you try calling 1-900-JUICY-BABE? There are sexy girls just like me waiting to take your call and rock your world. Mr. Johnson's magic powder will make you invisible. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. <laughs> All right, look in the mirror. It, uh, doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but close your eyes now. <gasps> oh, my God, it's a miracle. I can't see myself. This stuff really works. Mr. Johnson's magic powder. This stuff really works. Who is that? Where's that voice coming from? A little help here? At WTEU, we're keeping Last Tuesday alive. Hey, remember last Tuesday? Doesn't seem that long ago, does it? Those crazy clothes? What were we thinking when we wore that? And the ridiculous hairstyles. I hope those never come back. Well, tune in to WTEU to enjoy the sweet sounds of that magical time. Last Tuesday, we listened to songs that really meant something by artists like Kid Rock, Britney Spears, and NSYNC. Sure, come Thursday and Friday, we really were kicking ourselves for ever listening to music like that. But now, we can look back and admit we loved them. So join us, won't you? WTEU. All last Tuesday, all the time.
Hi there. Good, good morning to ye. Doing the early morning trivia thing, eh? What? What be wrong with ye? And, uh, how many mates will be sailing, eh? Er, what be your name, you see? Got it. You both... Okay, okay, I'll stop yammering. Now, now get out there and pick up some loot. Just like in your last game. Freedom shall soon be mine. Ah, ho, 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 ho. Go now. By yourself today, huh? Well, don't worry. I'm gonna harass you so much, it'll be like having an annoying little sidekick right there next to you. Okay, boot camp's over. Time for battle. So, what's it gonna be? Allow me to introduce Leanne Rhymes. Let's go $2,000 for this one. Heads up, here it comes. Which of the following performers' names is not a complete sentence? Bobby Combs, Britney Spears, Sting, or Faith Hill? <laughs> Time's up! Hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. Well, Faith Hill doesn't need much, but if she'd like to be a sentence, she does need a verb. And if she's interested, I could slip her a dangling modifier. Go ahead, pick one of these. Well, if it isn't my old friend. Ooh, damn it! This one's worth 4,000 bucks. Ahem, <clears throat> okay class, pay attention and repeat after me. How now, mad cow? Moo! I think it's the infected grass I ate! Moo! I think it's the infected feet I ate! Moo! I think it's the infected milk I ate! Mad cow disease is said to be spread through a type of feed made from rendered cows and sheep. <laughs> Moo! And now we're so mad you won't even believe the deals we're offering on milk! Time to select a category. Okay, give it up for the calm before the jello shots. Four thousand bucks if you get this. Hey, you know that popular Mardi Gras drink, the Hurricane, right? Yeah, woo-woo! <laughs> I just flashed you my breasts. Um, anyway, which of these would you most likely hear from a news correspondent reporting from your liver after it just got hit with yet another hurricane? We've got violent rum storms down here. The worst of the whiskey is on its way. It's some of the strongest gin ever seen. Or the locals are drowning in vodka. You snooze, you lose. Here's the one you didn't pick. My close personal friends, hurricanes, are made with rum. And usually the storm gets even more violent on its way back up. Time to make a choice. Let's have a big warm welcome for damn mall walkers. And you pocket 4,000 bucks if you get this one right. Put it in gear, because here we go. Suppose some modern-day explorers set out to cross the Mall of America. They want to recreate the path of Lewis and Clark. Which of these routes should they try to take? Bostonian Shoe to L.A. Hair. St. Louis Bread Company to Pacific Sunwear. Tell you what, I'll wait right here while you run into the Rand McNally store for a little help. <laughs> take a look at this. Lewis and Clark started at the St. Louis Bread Company and ended up at Pacific Sunwear. The most difficult portion of their journey was crossing the treacherous Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. Go ahead, pick a category. What in the... I can't read this. On the ground, Kristen. Grab hold of this category. Music leads to sex, period. 
right out of the gate, this one's going to be worth 10 grand. When you know what the answer is, buzz in and type it out. And listen to me, spelling counts. Oh, and not to put any more pressure on you, but the quicker you buzz in, the more cash you can make. All right, you need to unscramble these letters and tell me what phrase this is. Just buzz in and type when you know it. Genital sin? Yes. I bet it's a genre of music. You've probably heard it in an... Let's see what you got. Here's something to ponder. If it's easy listening, why does it make people want to rip the speakers out of their dentist's office? How about picking a category? The category is Michelangelo and the Art of Morning Sickness. This one can net you four grand. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. In what year did Botticelli likely suffer postpartum depression following his birth of Venus? 1276, 1482, 1650, or 1824? Botticelli painted the birth of Venus sometime around 1482. Ah, it's all just sexism, you know. I mean, a woman cries and laments, they stamp it with a clinical term. A guy does the same thing, they call it his blue period. Time to choose a category. Welcome to the Jack Attack. Pay attention to the items I show you. Buzz in on a correct match and you win money. If it's an incorrect match, you lose money. And remember... Remember the clue! It has to be a match that fits this clue. Sleep with a poodle and what'll you get? Well, I got three months probation. Don't forget the most important lesson there is to learn about yourself. 